So what is going on you guys? It is Alexa the Great here, the leader of the Flames of Fury clan, bringing you guys another episode in the Clashified series where we take Clash of Clans most elaborate and simple topics and break it down into a video. So what I'm going to be talking about today is giving you guys some tips on building and making an effective base. I'm going to use the base I have here as an example because it uses most of the things I'm going to be talking about. Um, so you can take what I have here and apply it to your own base. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is the town hall placement. It's very important that you know what kind of base you're going to make. You know, if you're a hybrid base or even a trophy push base, you want to make sure the town hall is well protected in towards the middle of the base as you can, as I have here. Now, if you're a farming base, you're going to have the town hall outside. And if you need help with farming, I have a whole video um, that I have on my channel, and the link to that will be in the description. So if you're having trouble with farming, make sure to check that out. Now, the thing about um, town hall trophy hunting bases is that you want to make sure that you're not going to be afraid to lose loot because it's going to happen. You're not going to want to protect the loot, but you don't actually want it on the outside because you're going to give away free free percentages. Um, now, the downside to having a hybrid base is that it's very small. Now, this is a trophy hunting base, but it's still kind of small. Um, but what I'm about to talk about in a couple minutes here uh, makes up for it definitely. Now, the problem with the hybrid base is you're going to notice that you can be defeated um, one star at even just using the drags, using all dragons, a giant healer, as well as archers and archers and barbarians combined together. Um, because this base is so small using a hybrid, when you're using a hybrid base, it makes it um, very vulnerable to those types because everything is so compacted together. So make sure you know what kind of base you're going to have. The next thing I'm going to talk about is splash defense. You really want to make sure you use this right. Um, if you don't, it's going to hurt you, and you're just going to kind of cast them out and think they're crap. Now, the most important splash defenses are the wizard tower, the air defenses, as well as the mortar. As far as the mortar and the wizard towers are concerned, you want to make sure that the mortars go around your bases and protect your bases, your base. You want to make sure the mortars go around the base and protect it fully because this is going to help you in the long run as well. All right. So one thing about the mortar is that, as you can see, if we look at the damage, Town Hall level 8, the max it can go is to level 6. And as you can see, the damage is 9 damage per second. Now you might think this is not, you know, this sucks. If you look at, um, compared to the Archer Tower, which uses 65 damage per second. You also have to know that since the new update in Town Hall 8, you can have 4 of these. So that's 36 damage per second. They're kind of slow, but it works um, really well, especially when you're using troops that don't have a lot of health, like uh, wizards, giants, or sorry, wizards, um, wall breakers, archers, as well as barbarians. They don't have a lot of damage um, that they can take, so these are very effective. Another downside of the mortar is that it is slow, and it also has this red ring, as you can see. Um, any troop that comes within this red ring, it will not fire at. So that's where you got to use the wizard tower to work together with it. You want the wizard tower really to protect um, most of the area where the mortar can't get. So you want it to cover. You want the wizard tower to cover most of the red ring, so that it's most effective. Because that way, the wizard tower can get where the mortar can't. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is along with the splash defense protecting it. You want to protect this air defense. You don't want it cast out um, on the outside, but you don't want it in the inside because you want it to be able to reach the outside. You want this little white circle that I have here that you can see um, to be able to reach the outside of the base, but not be so close in the middle that by the time it gets to the air defenses, it will be too late. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is the Barbarian King and the Clan Castle. You want them centralized in the base as much as possible. Now, as you notice, before you start judging me in the comments below and I get a bunch of hate comments, um, please note that I did have the Barbarian King and the Clan Castle um, as close to the Town Hall as I could get with this base design. But when they threw in the new update with the new mortar, it just kind of threw the base design all off and all out of whack. So I had to adjust. So I kind of just threw them out where I had space. Um, but the funneling and all the stuff that I'm going to be going over um, definitely makes up for it. 
But like I said, the Barbarian King kind of sucks. I mean, honestly, until you really get to level 5, does it really become good? Um, I don't worry about upgrading him just because, I don't know, he's not really important to me yet. But as you can see, damage per second, he does do um, a good amount of damage. He does 124 damage per second. Now the problem is, he's kind of slow. Um, you know, 16 movement speed. He's not the fastest troop, um, but he does do a good amount of damage. Now, the hit points, 1,786. You're probably thinking that's a lot. Not when you have um, things like level 10 cannons and archer towers and expos when you go against that and Teslas. He dies pretty quick, so you want to use that to his advantage. Um, the closer you put to the town hall the more effective that it's going to be for you because as you can see this little white area you don't want him to be lured out the next thing I'm going to talk about is wall placement it's very important that you don't have a base like this you know you just have like all of these all your stuff thrown out here and then you take your wall and you go like this You know, don't do that, because the problem is, I mean, I even see people doing this, and they double it, and they think, oh, it's fine, because I doubled the wall, you know, it's safer. The problem is, with the wall breakers, um, the wall breakers slash, they do slash damage, so it doesn't just affect one wall, it also will affect the one beneath it. So what happens is, they destroy this wall, they just send another wall breaker in, they destroy this wall, and maybe even these um, you know, now they're in and they can wreck all of this stuff and then it's gone. So you want to be careful that you don't do that. Um, speaking of wall placement, you want to make sure that you have two to three, um, defenses or objects in each wall, in each wall. Um, I guess you would call it like a group four at the most, um, to make sure that you use the wall the best of its ability. Now, one thing you can do is you can do funneling. Now this is a very important concept because when you get to Town Hall 7, you're going to notice that they use, uh, maybe 6 even does it, but I know at most in Town Hall 8, they use a lot of giant healer on you, and the funneling really is effective, and it works because what happens is you want to use the most funneling towards the outer ring of your base. That way you can have the splash defense protected, and they can go at the giants when they're funneling around here. Now the thing with giants is, you know that they only go after defenses. So when you have funneling on the outside of your base, it's going to go from this one to this one to this one to this one. They're just going to keep funneling, funneling around, and your slash defenses and whatever you have in the middle, in this case hidden Teslas, can go at them. Now one downside to the funneling is if they have enough wall breakers, they can event eventually breach and get past the funneling area, and then they'll start funneling around here. So that is kind of a weakness to funneling, but if you use it right, you have enough traps, and you're just wise about it, it's going to be right for you. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about, guys, um, it's kind of irrelevant, but I want to let you guys know that there will be a Thanksgiving and a Christmas Day special episode episodes um, that I'm going to be putting out for you. I definitely want to do the Thanksgiving Day Christmas special. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It might not come out on the exact holidays. Um, hopefully, it just kind of depends on my schedule. I'm having I'm a bunch of ideas as far as like crazy uh, videos that I think you guys would enjoy, but I want to see what you guys think of first. So let me know in the comments below. If this video helped you, remember to give it a like and subscribe as always. Help our channel grow and our clan. We want our first war super pumped. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have another video coming out hopefully tomorrow or Thanksgiving. See you guys next time and yeah, have fun.